Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Well, it's the first of June. Let's have a garden tour. Well, summer's in full swing now. Uh, we like to think that June is kind of the summer preheat, but this year's been a little bit different. It's, it's warmed up quite quickly and we're consistently in the 90s now. That has implications for the garden. And um, well, let me just give you kind of a framework of the growing season here in zone 9A on the Texas coast. Beginning on March the 1st, that is our average last frost date. That's when the spring garden goes in. And that means I'm either sowing seeds or putting in transplants. If I'm putting in transplants, I've started those transplants six to 12 weeks before March the 1st. That puts me back into January. So the spring garden grows from March, April, May into June. And right now about June is where I start transitioning to summer gardening. You can go watch a video that I've got right there about uh, some of the things I've done already that I'll show you to transition into summer gardening. Uh, summer gardening goes into September, maybe October. And in the, in the growing seasons, there's a lot of overlap. If something wants to continue to grow, like the pepper plants, I'll let them go from the spring all the way through the summer, sometimes well into the fall. And then winter gardening begins on October the 1st and lasts all the way back to March the 1st. So winter gardening is actually my favorite. But it's hot now. What's growing, what's not thriving, what's doing well, what's not doing well, let's go take a look. We'll begin here with my small raised bed on the side of my porch. It's got garlic in it right now and some chives. There's my chives. I've been harvesting off of those for a while. It's been very dry and my garlic's not quite ready. I dug down in here and you can see it's starting to bulb up there a little bit, but not quite as much as I need it to. So we'll check it every now and then. It starts to bulb up a little bit, but they're not very big. I'm not sure how much more growth these are going to put on. Our drought season has been pretty rough on these garlics. So uh, yeah, we'll harvest them when we can. Moving over to the patio, my sweet potato slips doing crazy. I put in some tubers down in that soil. You can see them down there and they are growing slips and you can see there are little roots down in there. These roots are what we're looking for. We can break these plants off with the roots and plant them in our garden. We'll be doing that when we have room. Citrus doing well, putting on new growth even in the summer. And this one over here has fruit. This one had tons of fruit. That's a mandarin. Had tons of fruit last year. Doesn't have any this year, but this one didn't have any last year. This blood orange, and now we're going to get some fruit. Not a whole lot, maybe a dozen, but that's pretty good. Fig trees. Fig trees are doing great. Putting on fruit. Going to have a nice summer harvest of many, many figs. And I've got dozens of varieties, but uh, most of them are small, like those over there. The larger ones, the ones that I like, I've kept large and let them grow up a little bit. The smaller ones over there, well, we'll see if I like them when they get a little bit larger. Look at all the figs we're getting. Basil, harvested some of that for the meal I cooked the other night. Starting to get skunky because it is bolting, but uh, gotta have some basil in the garden. But yeah, the fruit trees are doing well. Got some citrus with some blossoms on it right there. And more fig trees, more fig trees. Here's mine. Uh, southern cherry what is this what do they call it a uh, Barbados cherry looking healthy a few leaves got some pest damage but overall this tree is looking really healthy don't know how soon to expect fruit probably next year or the next yeah the, the figs and fruit trees are doing great that plant right there that's ginger ginger's doing well it froze back during the winter all the way to the ground but it's put up some new growth so hopefully that's putting some roots out. It's actually a little more broad. I mean, this this wasn't here when I planted it. The ginger was only about that big, so hopefully it's it's growing down under there. Rosemary is looking great. Tons of rosemary. Look at all that. This is fresh new growth. I've got oregano, some thyme, and some marjoram in here too. And that's a good herb bed. That has been a great little herb bed for me. Muscadines, We're gonna have another heavy fruit year. Look at all this fruit. These are our baby muscadines right here. These will all generate fruit for me. Yeah, I can't wait. All up and down this micro vineyard. 
I've got those little baby fruits. Down here they're not so baby, they're getting a little bit bigger. Look at that, look at all that fruit. If you watched my video on corrective pruning, you may have thought, wow, you've knocked these things back so far, they're not gonna possibly recover or grow fruit. But you can see, muscadines respond well to proper pruning. We're gonna have a big harvest. Tomatoes are ripening. Potted tomatoes aren't doing so well this year, and I'm not sure why. The in-ground tomatoes, well, I didn't really prune this year. Since I let my Edox tomatoes sprawl and go wild, I thought, oh, let's just let the other tomatoes go wild, too, and see what happens. Look at all these leaf-footed bugs here. Those are pests. This little gem is called a clementine, and it's a delicious little tomato. I love it. Clementine tomato. It's a hybrid from Johnny Seeds. I uh, have some Romas down here starting to ripen, and this is a beefsteak. I expected them to be large tomatoes, but they're not. And they're not very tasty. This plant is succumbing to the weather. What is this? this is a morning sun? Morning sun. Little uh, semi-cherry tomato. They're pretty, but they're not very flavorful. So, uh, yeah, that's about all I can say about the tomatoes this year. Not a great year for selections. This one was good, and my Edox was good, but I didn't get any other really good tomatoes. Since this year, I have been experimenting with sprawling rather than climbing vining plants. I thought I'd let my cucumbers sprawl. I've done that before. They grow just fine. And you can see we've got a cucumber there. We've got one here. You have to go through here and hunt for cucumbers, and that's kind of fun. There's another one right there. A couple of them down in there. Those are perfect pickle size. So we ought to get out here and harvest in the next couple of days. But you can let cucumbers sprawl if you want to. You get more production out of them if you put them on a string trellis like that and prune them. But I think I've said before when I was talking about my tomatoes that um, it's been one of those years where we've got too much going on and haven't been able to get out in the garden and work it the way I want to. That's why it's a little hairy over there, a little unkept. That's why everything's sprawling that ought to be pruned up and on, on a trellis. But, you know, hey stuff happens your daughter gets married and things like that beans down below the leaves down below naturally are starting to show their age so you can come in and pluck those off or let nature take its course the leaves at the top of the trellis are looking great these are rattlesnake pole beans and i have uh, talked about these in another video shows you how to cook them they're very good beans one of the best green beans i've ever had actually rattlesnake pole beans got a lot of them here Keep these picked and they'll keep you in beans. I'm gonna see how well they do through the summer heat. Bell peppers. Bell peppers in pots typically don't get real big for me. I think that has something to do with the nature of potted plants. They just don't have all the resources or the room to spread their roots out to go mining for resources. The ones I had in my garden did really well for me and are still doing well. Right here are my edox tomatoes that are sprawling and i've been harvesting from these look at this weedy mess can you believe how weedy this mess is that's what happens when you let them sprawl you can't get in there to weed but that's okay they're still putting on these beautiful trusses of tomatoes and i'm still getting a harvest you just have to get down and hunt for them and that's all right garden doesn't have to be absolutely pretty to be successful i have harvested most of these the ripe ones. I've got a ton of unripe tomatoes in there. They'll ripen up for me. And after that, I may take these out and put my sweet potatoes in. Over here, I've got a Korean pepper. I don't remember how to pronounce it, but I have two of those plants. And they're putting on heavily. I'm gonna wait for those to get ripe and red. We'll harvest those. Got some mountain roasters right here. And that plant flopped over, so I'm gonna have to set it back up or stake it. That's a heavy, heavy plant. Got some jalapenos there. Here are where we put the lima beans. And this was just a day, two days ago, that I planted these lima beans and flame weeded. And you can see the nut sedge already coming back. It's grown two inches, two inches in two days. But at least it looks a little nicer than it did before, huh? Let's look here. Another pepper plant. I forget which one. Oh, that was my bell pepper. I harvested a bunch of bells off of there already. This is red flame cayenne, harvested the red ones. We've got a bunch of green ones on there. 
Great pepper. Red flame cayenne. Awesome pepper. These beets, they're ready to come out. And I can put something in there. Maybe some okra. Maybe some eggplant. Look at this. These are my poblanos. These need to be harvested because they're starting to get sun scald. At least that one is. Poblanos, man, they ought to be bigger than that. The seeds I've, I've got from Johnny Seeds two years in a row have not yielded the biggest poblano peppers. I've had varieties from other seed companies that uh, put on regular size poblanos, which are at least twice that big. And I don't know if that's Johnny Seeds or if it's just my soil or something, but yeah. Here's some mountain roasted peppers. Nice sweet pepper. These will turn bright red and that one down there is starting to get red. And uh, again, cayenne. I gotta have some cayenne. Look at that. These are huge red flame cayenne. My elderberry tree is looking healthy. No flowers. I think the freeze that knocked it back uh, seriously stunted it. And it's just trying to recover some growth. I don't expect flowers this year or berries, but it's looking healthy. Little herbs down here in with some uh, pepper plants. This little tomato there, no, that's a pepper plant. These little potted plants haven't done well and I'm not sure why. You know, you keep them fertilized, you keep them watered. Something about the pots this year. Yeah, the beets are doing well. Check this guy out. Oh. That's nice, huh? I think that's what you want to see. Something about that size. What do you think, Phoebe? Huh? You like beets? No, you don't like beets. Let's get some more. These got to come out because I need to put other things in. So we'll pull some of these up. I can't let these go more than a couple more weeks. So, uh, We'll slowly begin harvesting till we get them all out. There we go. Not bad. There's not much to show on the apple trees and the fruit trees. Apple trees are all growing well. The fruit trees are growing well. There's the plum tree. And there's the peach tree. Looking good. Healthy growing no pests blackberries are loaded look at that tons of them gonna make some jelly this year this is Cado I believe it's one of the Arkansas varieties one of the Arkansas developed varieties of thornless blackberry that were named after uh, Native American tribes I'm going to get some lemons from Lucy the Lemon Tree this year, which is shocking considering the history of this tree and the freeze that we had. Look at all that. And there's nothing better than a citrus blossom. My wife will be happy to see these fruits. Awesome. Okay, here's an update on my single seed challenge. This is a hot Portugal pepper, and you can see it's not doing so well got some little peppers coming on here but it hasn't grown all my potted plants this year have not done well and I think it's because of the material now that I look at it this material probably has too much wood chip in it and there's some carbon sequestration I think that's how you say it going on in here nitrogen being used up to break down this wood um, that's at least my theory. It's nice and green. It has lost a lot of leaves, but uh, it's kind of on its second wind here. So we're going to nurse it along, give it a, a well-rounded fertilizer. I have been fertilizing it, but uh, I think there's just something going on in this soil. So this soil will probably be excellent next year once all of this organic material breaks down in here. But uh, there's an awful lot of wood chip down in there. And I think that's probably what's going on here with my potted plants this year. So, well, there's the single seed challenge. It's growing. It's nice and sturdy. We just need to baby it along. 
Well, there we go. Not a lot of selection in the garden, not a lot of variety. And there's a lot growing and there's a lot dying. There's a lot of weeds out there. It's summer, what do you expect? That's what you get. So it's a small garden and this tour feels particularly small because there's not tons of stuff to show you. And the things that I did show you, well, I haven't done them right this year, right. I've done them in a way that works but I haven't done them the canonical right way. Like those cucumbers there, I haven't pruned them up and trained them up a trellis. And uh, you know, my tomatoes over there, I didn't put them up a single vine like I planned to. You don't have to do all those things if you don't want to. Yes, you can get better results, but you can still enjoy cucumbers from your garden if you let them sprawl. That's what they do naturally. Anyway, there's a garden tour, an update of what's going on. If you like our content, you wanna learn how to garden in a small backyard context, Join my channel. Happy gardening to you. Take care. Bye-bye.